Hey folks, been getting a lot of questions about this. People can easily find uh, where to look at the changes on the other planets that we have been tracking, but getting a lot of questions about the changes on the sun. So let's start from the outer solar system and move our way in. Voyager has already detected the interstellar shocks, the, the shock fronts from the galactic current sheet impacting the heliosphere and coming into the solar system. Pluto had its atmospheric collapse. That was a big one of the last couple of years. Neptune, big story was it had its storm reversal, basically a hurricane going the wrong way uh, after many storms had been studied on that planet, indicative of a systemic reversal. Uranus, like Neptune before it, has seen record storms, record aurora. Haven't seen one going the other way yet, but still major uh, records set on Uranus. In Saturn, now we have been able to see Saturn in telescopes for centuries, and they have known that there is a superstorm that hits the Northern Hemisphere every 30 years, except it just happened 10 years early, uh, indicative of perhaps a magnetic change on the planet, allowing more incident radiation to come in and trigger that storm a little earlier. Jupiter's had some of the most changes uh, of all. The big red spot started fading. Red Jr. was born. Its cloud bands disappeared and then reappeared. Most importantly, its radio frequency is changing, and that is due uh, to electrons accelerated in its magnetic field. And since the nature of an electron didn't change, the nature of its magnetic field must have changed. Uh, as we're moving towards the inner solar system, we have also detected more interstellar pickup ions and energetic neutral atoms, two of the things that we would be expecting to come with the galactic current sheet. Mars climate changes dwarf those on Earth, and its seismicity has been off the charts. We've been uh, breaking records seismically there. And of course, we also recently learned that its mantle is alive and active, and I don't think that they missed that one before. I think that that's a new feature. Earth, obviously, we go over the changes here all the time, from the magnetosphere to the ionosphere to the atmosphere to the rotation change. Venus' fastest winds are 33% faster. That's no small thing right there. Uh, the only one we're still waiting on really is Mercury, uh, but... Bepi Colombo will be there before we know it. Now, we've also seen the studies how there's extra dust in the inner solar system. There's extra dust in the corona of the sun. But this is the big change here on the sun. We are seeing a change in its coronal chemistry and in its magnetic fields. That is critically important because we basically have changes indicative of a magnetic shift throughout the solar system as the galactic current sheet should be bringing the galactic magnetic reversal. But here we actually have on the sun, all the way to the sun, evidence of its magnetic fields changing and how that's changing the actual helium chemistry. This is the very start of what should eventually be changing the chemistry of the corona in the lead up to the solar micronova. So that is the paper that we're talking about when, when we uh, come into that realm there. Uh, those are the changes throughout the solar system. Yes, those are all in the books, but also they are in the playlist linked right below the video and the playlist is free. So big ups on that one. Anyway, hope that was informative. You can take a look at that paper if you'd like to. Changes on the sun, as significant as any of the other changes throughout the solar system. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.